What's better for one kit developments, sending them out on loan or keeping them in your squad for a rotational role? Well, I did an experiment to find out. Let me start off by explaining the setup of this experiment. Now it's been pretty well documented that players age 17 or younger benefit the most from training when it comes to their development. So my experiment looks at players aged 18, the age where match experience becomes the most important aspect of development. I think it goes without saying that we don't have to look at the extreme cases when it comes to the expected playing time of your wonder kit in your own team. If you know that your youngster is not going to play at all and he's better than the level of your B team, it's always going to be better to loan him out. And if he's good enough to secure a starting 11 spot, it's almost always better to keep him and start him. Which leaves us with the situation where he's good enough to be in and around the first team, but he's not expected to play 90 minutes anytime soon. And then you have a decision to make. Keep him as a rotational option or send him out on loan to get 90 minutes every week. And those two options are exactly what we'll be looking at in this experiment. Given that context, meet our test subjects. Andrea Sheldrup, Alex Scott and Usman Diamande. Three 18-year-old wonder kids playing in different positions and all of them able to develop into real superstars. And I've made some transfers for them. I've moved all of them to a Premier League club where based on their current ability, they will be a rotational option. For each of these players, I will simulate the first season 14 times while using a tactic where they can play in their natural position to see how much they will develop with rotational minutes. Now meet their doppelgangers, exact copies of these wonder kids who are under contract at the same Premier League club but who are loaned out to some of the top championship teams where they can play in their natural position and where there are guaranteed 90 minutes of playing time. They'll be playing in the same 14 seasons as their original counterpart to see which of the two versions of these Wonder Kids will develop the most. To make this comparison, we'll be looking at the average across these 14 seasons for a couple of metrics. We'll be looking at the average amount of games, the average percentage of those games that they've started, and the average amount of minutes per game, so that we get a sense of how much match experience these players have gotten. We'll also be looking at the average rating of the player, as well as the average rank in the league table of the club that he played at, to get a sense of how well the player has performed across the seasons. And to determine how much each player has developed, we'll be looking at the average current ability change across the seasons. Now that we've got everything set up, let's simulate all the seasons to find out what works best for our Wonder Kids development. All the seasons are done, so let's take a look at the results, starting with Andreas Sheldrup. Now the original Sheldrup played his football at Brighton, functioning as the left wing replacement for Mitoma. Across the 14 seasons, he played an average of 26 games, starting in 20.3% of them, while playing an average of only 15 minutes per game. He had a solid average rating of a 6.8, while Brighton had an average rank of a 6.6. .6. And finally, for his development, he got an average current ability growth of 7.8, quite a lot for only 15 minutes per game. Which takes us to his doppelganger, who moved to Burnley on loan. He played an average of 37.6 games, starting in 97.2% of them and playing an average of 65.4 minutes per game. A stark improvement on his original counterpart. His performances weren't noticeably better, as he got an average rating of a 6.9, while Burnley got an average rank of 4.4. But surely his improvement in match time experience will translate to his development. His average current ability growth is only 3.1, less than half his original counterpart. Quite a significant difference, but maybe this will just be for Shelter Up specifically. Let's look at the results of the other Wonder Kids. Our second test subject is Alex Scott, a dynamic midfielder who I've transferred over to Crystal Palace, where he can be a rotational option for any of the central midfield positions. In his 14 seasons, he got a bit more playing time than the original Sheldrup, playing an average of 32.2 games, but starting in 38.8% of them, and playing an average of 38.2 minutes per game. His performances were similar, getting a solid average rating of a 6.7, while Crystal Palace got an average rank of also a 6.7. But the increase in playing time compared to the original Sheldrup did translate to his development, as he grew his current ability on average by 8.6. Onto his doppelganger, who played his football at Norwich for the 14 seasons. Scott's doppelganger got the second most playing time across all the simulations, playing an average of 39.7 games, starting in 98.6% of them and playing an average of 78.2 minutes per game. And his performances were slightly better as well, getting an average rating of a 7, while Norwich had an average rank of a 2.5, so he truly played at the top of the championship. 
So all of that must translate to his development as well, right? His average current ability growth was only 4.9, just over half of the original Alex Scott of Crystal Palace. I'm starting to see a pattern here. Let's see if our last test subject confirms this. Quick little side note, if this experiment has been insightful in any way, you can let me know by tapping that like button. Now on to the next wonder kit. For our final wonder kit, we're looking at Usman Diamande, a powerful centre back who I've transferred over to Aston Villa. The centre back position is substituted way less often compared to more attacking positions, which we can see in the playing time for Diamande as a rotational centre back. He played on average just 20.7 games, starting in 15.9% of them and playing an average of 28.4 minutes per game. This didn't hurt his performances though, as he got an average rating of a 6.8, while Aston Villa had an average rank of a 3.8? Aston Villa consistently in the top 4. Shout out to the simple positive headache tactic which I use for Diomande simulations. So what did this do for his development? Well his lack in playing time compared to the other Wonder Kids really showed, with an average current ability growth of only 2.1. His doppelganger will have to be able to improve on that. Diomande's duplicate went out on loan to Watford, and I can tell you that there can be a more stark difference in playing time. He played an average of 44.4 games, starting in an astounding 100% of them and getting an average of 88.5 minutes per game. And his performances were great as well, getting an average rating of a 7.1, while Watford had an average rank of a 3.4. So he must have outdeveloped his original counterpart. His average current ability growth was only 0.4. Even with the biggest difference in playing time across the test subjects, Diomande's duplicate didn't even get close to his original counterpart when it comes to development. So what can we say based on these results? First of all, when looking at the Wonder Kids who played as rotational options at the Premier League clubs, we can see that more playing time still has a positive impact on their development. But more interestingly, we can see that the amount of playing time by itself is not nearly as important as the quality of playing time, as all the duplicates who were loaned out to the championship got way more playing time than their original counterparts, but didn't even get close to their development in the current ability. So is this definitive proof that you should never loan out your Wonder Kids again? No, the sample size for this experiment was not nearly big enough to make those kind of hard conclusions. But it does suggest that you should prioritize the quality of playing time when deciding what to do with your fringe wonder kids. So if you can give any noteworthy playing time to your youngsters, you should consider keeping them around as a rotational option. And if you really want to loan them out, try sending them to a club in the same division as yourself, or something as close as possible, to ensure the highest possible quality of playing time. Now if you want to see another interesting insight for Football Manager, check out this video where I discuss one of the best ways to make your saves even more exciting. I'll see you on the next video.